right. Hello, everyone. It is 1 p.m. Eastern, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Dean, and I am the Director of Marketing at AIM Transportation Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we have a really fun hour plan. So um, we're starting to feel the temperatures drop. It's getting dark sooner, and we know what's coming. Ever dreaded winter. As much as an average person may hate to see the snow flying out there around us, for someone operating a fleet of commercial vehicles, we know that there is a whole added layer of challenges that winter presents. But the good news is, is that most of those challenges can be avoided altogether with a little bit of preventative action, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, what you can do to ensure that your vehicles are going to keep moving this winter without any interruptions to your operation. Um, at AIM, we maintain over 11,000 vehicles nationwide, so we know what it takes to keep your trucks up and running in the winter. We have some customers on the line that are already experiencing the AIM advantage when it comes to vehicle maintenance with AIM. Our maintenance department is second to none. We go the extra mile with each and every PM, each repair, and every customer interaction. However, some of you may not be familiar with all of the different maintenance-related services we provide here at AIM. We basically do it all. We have full service lease customers where vehicle maintenance is included as a feature of your lease, preventative maintenance customers where we are helping out with your PMs on your owned equipment, and we do time and material maintenance where we're just performing maintenance on your vehicles on an at needed basis. Um, we also offer a service called Pro Shop, where we oversee your entire maintenance function as if it were an AIM facility, giving you access to our parts pricing, our software, and our decades of experience in running a seamless oper seamlessly operating maintenance facility. Uh, the bottom line is we do it all. If you have a commercial vehicle, we have something for you. And we have the best of the best when it comes to overseeing these maintenance programs on the line with us today. Mr. Leroy Casali, who is our Director of Maintenance for our Western Division, and Nick Martin, our Regional Director of Maintenance out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, these are the guys who know what to do when it comes to keeping a truck running in the winter. And I'm just going to advance the slide. There's their contact information there. A couple of things to note before we get started with our session today. We are recording this um, meeting, so we do ask that you stay muted throughout the presentation. At the end of the presentation, Leroy and Nick are going to open up the floor for questions. At that time, you can either unmute yourself and verbally ask the questions, or you can type them into the chat function, and I'll read the questions out loud for these gentlemen to answer. Uh, tomorrow morning, I will send out an email to everyone who registered for this meeting with a PDF copy of this presentation, a link to the recording, uh, Leroy's contact information, Nick's contact information, my contact information. If there's anything that slipped through the cracks and we weren't able to ask today, you're welcome to email us after the fact and ask. Um, and you're welcome to contact me if you have any questions about any of the services that AIM offers, and we can follow up with you and talk to you about that. Um, so Leroy... And Nick, thank you so much for being here today. And if you're ready to start, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Jess. And welcome everyone. And thank you for participating. In the upcoming slides, we're going to give you some valuable tips on how to reduce winter rate related issues. Each year, AIM prepares for winter season. We want to make sure that you are ready as well. By being proactive, we can reduce the potential for winter related problems. In this slide, we wanna cover some of the importance of how to start your equipment. If your application has a clutch, be sure to fully depress the clutch pedal while cranking the engine over. By doing that, fully depressing the clutch, the engine turns over more freely to help increase cranking amps. And this is well needed based on temperatures. Some temperatures aren't as critical, but when it's down below zero and we have those weeks at a time, it really helps to depress that clutch. What that does is it frees up the transmission and it just cranks over the engine and you're not turning both components at the same time. Cranking the engine for no more than 15 seconds at a time. And this is so important. And why this is important is we don't wanna overheat the starter and burn it up. Because once we've done that, we've lost all the ability to be able to start that truck. If the engine is cranking very slow or not at all, please call your local shop if open or road rescue after hours.
Next, we are going to go over airline system maintenance to help avoid airline freeze-ups. The air system must be free of water daily at the end of each trip. Now, sometimes some of the folks driving the trucks may forget because you have a really warm day and then all of a sudden it's the weekend, it's Friday, they wanna go home and they forget about doing it and then we get the cold snap over the weekend. By draining your, your uh, air tanks daily, this reduces any of the moisture from the tanks. Be sure to drain the primary, secondary, and wet tank. Now, based on manufacturers, they're located in different places for space. Sometimes they'll put them under the, the uh, driver's side uh, floorboard. Sometimes they'll put them under the passenger, passenger side, and sometimes they'll put them behind the cab. Or if you have a straight truck, they're right in between the fuel tank and the rear tires. Water in the air system will freeze, creating various issues. Um, one example I want to mention to you guys is if, if your driver comes in, he's doing his pre-trip, he walks around the truck, he's doing everything he should, the truck's running fine, air pressure's up to 120, but he releases the brakes and he takes off a block, maybe two down the road. He hits the stoplight or the stop sign. He gets a low air warning. And at this point, it's too late. There's probably a block of ice in the air tank from maybe not being able to bleed the tank or somebody forgot. But nonetheless, the truck will build air and show that everything's working normally until you start applying the brakes and exhausting that air that's in the tanks. Once that air is gone, you're pretty well done. The truck's gonna to have to be towed back in. We're gonna to have to thaw the tanks and it's gonna be a process and put your driver behind. If excessive moisture is in the tanks daily, we want you guys to report this to your local shop. The reason being is we could have a, a premature failure on the air compressor that's starting to fail. Be sure to build your air pressure to 120 PSI before releasing the brakes. Automatic transmissions will create a code or will not go into gear with pressure below 120 PSI. This is a good one. This slide is very important. Today's diesel fuel that we purchase is only 15 parts per million. So what that means is that we have a cloud point. And what cloud point means, this is when the paraf paraffin wax starts to freeze up. And this typically happens right at 12 above zero. So it's very important that you blend your fuel properly. There are two different types of additives. One's a 911 and one's a diesel additive. And you'll see here on the right-hand side, you'll see power service. There are multiple different brands of, of diesel additive. Some of the most popular ones are in a spec and the diesel power, power service that you see in the picture. The, the uh, diesel power service that you see in the picture, this is just a preventative. Just this helps maintain your fuel for the cloud point but the 911 is after you're already froze up. This, this, that product helps. It's the same product made by Power Service. It's called 911, different. I think it's in a black uh, quart jug. And this is a very, very strong um, product. So you wanna be careful how you treat your fuel with this. Fuel is treated at all AIM locations where sold. Our warmer locations such as Phoenix, may not be treated. So please check with your local branch heading from a warm climate to a cold climate when getting fuel. If you purchase fuel outside of AIM, make sure it's blended. Do not add additive to the fuel that is already treated. If you need to add additive to your tanks, please contact AIM to purchase bottles. Too much or too little can damage the fuel system. Every spring we encounter several vehicles that we have injector failure. And that's because of over treating the fuel system. So be careful in how you uh, treat your fuel and make sure that you're reading the labels of how many ounces per gallon. One of the common issues is having a half a tank of fuel untreated and topping it off with treated fuel and assuming the fuel is good to go. 
the treated fuel will then be diluted and will not have the same freeze protection. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to the second half of the presentation to Nick Martin. Thank you, Leroy. I'd like to take a moment and talk about uh, block heaters and how to properly use them. We strongly recommend that you plug your unit in at the end of each shift during extreme cold temperatures. We want to try and maintain that engine temperature as much as possible. So if we shut the engine off and then plug it in the next day, it's, it's gonna be really hard to get the, that temperature back up in that unit. The heater is, is really not designed to heat up a cold engine. Um, max block temperature is only 100 degrees and you're not gonna achieve those temperatures by plugging it in cold. So I guess the message is, is it's just really important that we plug it in you know, when the engine is warm after the driver is uh, done doing their deliveries. Most block heaters are 1500 watts and they draw around 12 and a half amps. Depending on your location and how your service is set up, most outlets are, are only 15 to, to 20 amps. So we can only plug in uh, one block heater in per outlet in, at most locations, but that's gonna depend upon your setup. I also recommend um, checking your, your outlets before it gets cold out. And then also when other people overlook um, the extension cords, I would, uh, I would recommend investing in extension cords that have lighted ends. Drivers can quickly tell when they're plugged in if they're working. There's nothing worse than plugging in a, a unit and they assume the block heater is working and it's plugged in and it's actually not heating anything. In some cases, it may be cold enough where the best solution is just to let the unit run. Um, most of our units, uh, I should, let me rephrase that. Some of our units have an idle shutdown feature and some of them don't. So if you're not sure on your unit, I would recommend calling your, your local branch or your service manager and, you know, we can connect to it and take a look at it. Next, I'd like to talk about having the proper supplies in the event of a breakdown in cold weather. Okay. I, uh, and actually, this, this past week, um, you know, this is a good example. I had a, a couple breakdowns in our region where it kind of caught me off guard as well. It was in the southern stage where it was actually a little colder, but the drivers were in some remote areas and they were going to be participating in a, a rather long breakdown, trying to get toes arranged. And they were, they were cold. They didn't have the proper supplies. They didn't have uh, warmer clothes. They didn't have blankets. Um, so this is a good time to make sure we're, we're talking to those drivers that are, are traveling or just in general are gonna be in the colder areas. You never know when you're gonna have a breakdown. So some of the supplies that we would recommend having in your, in your unit, um, especially over the road units would be water, food, blankets or sleeping bags, warm coat, gloves, boots, hat, phone charger, and, and anything else that they, they feel would be uh, appropriate. You, you never know how long a, a breakdown is gonna be. You know, our, our hope and our goal is to resolve it as quickly as possible, but especially like when we have a, a polar vortex, there's a lot of things that get out of our control um, with the timeliness of a breakdown. So it's just really important to have all these essentials. Another thing is, is at any point, if your driver's life feels endangered, they, they need to call 911. I mean, our road rescue team and our maintenance team is going to work to get you up and running as quickly as possible. But if the driver doesn't have the, the proper supplies or if they do and they've been out there for a long time and, and they're starting to get very concerned, you know, we're, we're wanting them to call 911 if necessary. Now we'll move on to how we can make ourselves prepared for the, uh, the cold weather. Uh, some of the basics is just staying, staying tuned to your local weather forecast. You know, especially in the winter time, it, things can change and, and change pretty quickly. So for instance, on a, a Friday, it might be in the thirties, might not feel too bad. Uh, people are going home for the weekend, but you know, Sunday it may be going down to, to five degrees. And the next thing you know, we, we have trucks that might not be plugged in and, uh, they may not have been started and come Monday morning they're, they're not starting. So if it's, 
if it's going to be cold out, especially the extreme cold conditions, it might be a good idea to have somebody uh, from your company come in and start the units. Um, this will also let you know ahead of time if, if they're unsuccessful starting the unit, we can start working ahead of time to, to get a road rescue team or our service team involved to get that unit ready for your deliveries on Monday rather than having a, a bunch of units not start on Monday morning. And another thing on reefer straight trucks, it's important to let the reefer run to keep the battery charged and it'll help keep that fuel, fuel moving. And lastly, uh, I want to talk about warning lights. When we have check engine lights, um, lights going for a region, triangle lights on the dash, all those are, are sending a message that there's some type of error. And, and you may have drivers that say, well, that, that's on, it's been on the last week. They, and at times they may be able to get by with that light on, but when you compound cold weather issues with the lights, it, it really, is going to escalate those issues quickly. So I would highly recommend if, if your driver is reporting any, uh, any lights on the dash, get those communicated to the local branch uh, maintenance team that we can get ahead of those. We also have our road rescue phone number listed below. It's the 800 number. You know, if it's during business hours and you have a um, good working relationship with the service manager, if you feel like it's a, a more local issue, you feel free to call them. If, uh, if it's after hours, you're out of the area, most certainly call a road rescue number and we'll be more than happy to help. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Um, you can either unmute yourself or you can type them into the chat function and Leroy or Nick will go ahead and take those questions from you. All right, gentlemen, I had one pop up here in the message. Um, how can I tell if my idle shutdown is enabled or disabled? Yeah, Jess, I'd like to answer that. Um, in this situation, uh, specifically to Ames fleet, all of our rental trucks are set to shut down in five minutes. Any of FSL lease customers, if you have any of our trucks, those are turned off and they run consistently. So therefore, no need to worry about it if you're leasing one of our vehicles. Now, if you own your own, we'd be happy to get in there in the computer and check that for you. So at that point in time, you know, we can we can get into your, your ECM and, and check the footprint to see if, uh, if that's enabled or disabled. Wonderful. Um, Leroy, I had another question come up. Is the road rescue number available if I am operating non-AIM equipment? Absolutely. We'll help you through whatever you need and uh, take care of your concerns. And I just wanted to state too that um, we're the opposite of a company that oper that offers just out of the box solutions. We offer customized maintenance solutions depending on your unique operation. Each company is unique, and we want to make sure we're tailoring our solutions to you specifically. So we're always able to come up with some kind of solution, particularly when it comes to road rescue maintenance um, or any kind of concern you have of those natures. Uh, we have another question from Hector. Would leaving the APU on for driver 34 hour reset maintain the engine? Yes, I'd, I'd like to take that one, Jess. So there's there's many different types of APUs on the market today. Um, some of them are an actual separate engine and they're, um, you know, they tie in with the engine cooling system. On, on that design, it would, you know, keep the coolant uh, temperature up, keep the battery charged. But there's there's several other designs out there. Some of them are actually just battery driven, and they um, they don't utilize coolant on the engine. So that that's going to be a different situation there. So what I would recommend is reach out to your local branch so we can review what uh, APU you have and kind of make some suggestions there. Because the APU is a great tool depending on what setup you have, they can actually really help in the cold weather conditions. Thank you, Nick. 
Um, I had another one here pop up to me directly in extreme cold. How often should we start our trucks over the weekend to make sure that they will start on Monday morning? So I'd like to answer that question. It's going to vary on the temperatures. Keep in mind the cloud point of fuel is at 12 degrees above zero. And the reason for that is the 15 parts per million, uh, they've refined the fuel in more of terms of like unleaded. So they there's very little lubricity in that fuel. So it's gonna depend on the temperature, we're talking extreme. If it's below zero and it's gonna be that way for days, our suggestion would be to, to start that truck and leave it run and kick the idle up to seven to 800 RPMs. Perfect. And again, for all the AIM customers out there that are on the line, if you have any questions about that idle setting, you know, reach out to your local AIM shop and, you know, test it out ahead of time. Make sure you know what that setting is like. So when your driver's out there and he might be trying to leave his unit running or your shop's trying to start it on a Sunday morning and don't know about that idle setting that that doesn't come into play and, you know, cause you any situation that you aren't prepared for. And, and just for the group, another tip would be to keep your fuel tanks full. When you see the polar vortex coming in, we typically know this in advance. And sometimes it's not as bad as the news reports, but sometimes it's worse. So in those situations, you know, we want to make sure that your fuel tanks are full because if you do leave your truck run, you know, make sure you're in a safe place. It's locked, you know, you got a locked yard and and maybe have two keys where you can leave the truck run and lock the door. Absolutely. Any other questions? That was the last one I had on the screen here. All right. This is Keith of Fleet Corps. I can put uh, just on the fueling. Um, that's what we do actually is uh, fueling. So the, the cloud point at 12 degrees can actually uh, vary by the rack you're pulling fuel from. So it's really with the paraffins in the different fuels that you're pulling. We actually start testing um, the terminals that we're pulling fuel from um, about this time of year when they switch their winter blends. So when you're talking about a additive, um, we have a, a additive that we actually created called Core Power Premium Diesel, which will take that cloud point where we're testing it down to about 10 below zero. Um, after you do that, uh, after you get to about 10 below zero, then your additives really stop working um, from because of the paraffins. Um, so then you have to really blend it with a number one diesel or a WASA or something like that. When you're talking about the 911 diesel additive, that's um, kind of an isopropyl alcohol that breaks it up after it started gelling. Um, but that's just some, some input as well. That might help. Absolutely, uh, Keith. And, and just for the group, thank you for sharing that because that's very right. important information. Uh, racks do make a difference of who supplies your fuel if you have fuel on site. Um, as Keith mentioned, you know, the paraffins in the paraffin wax in, in fuel, uh, it, it, it does, it does freed up, uh, it clouds up and freezes pretty, pretty darn quick. And it's, it's almost right before your eyes, you can see it. But uh, as far as all of the AIM sites, we do use uh, InnoSpec. Um, they say it's treated to 20 below our fuel, and we've had good success every single year of using our InnoSpec uh, fuel additives. So as Keith recommended, you know, there, you know, to Keith's point, there's multiple different brands out there. So just study up on them. Uh, but if you don't have the option of a fuel tank, make sure that you're buying a, a quality product. And, you know, Keith, just to ask you, it seems like you know a lot about fuel. Are there any brands out there any different than any other brand? Uh, I, our core power premium diesel are uh, different just because uh, it does. So when you say in a test of 20 below, ours will go to uh, 28 below. When you, but when you look at the actual cloud point, uh, most almost every additive on the market right now is going to be about... 10 below is when you're going to start seeing the cloud board, but the gelling is going to be probably around negative 28. 
that really, if you have an Arctic situation, you got to have some type of blending program with that, either a WASA or a number one diesel um, to be blended in that. So about, I think ratio, if I'm not mistaken, is 10%. Number one will give you an extra two degrees, uh, you know, uh, temperature drop below what your, your current cloud point is. Um, but ours, what makes ours a little bit different is it has the moisture controls in it, has a stability. So if you don't have a, a fast moving uh, fuel through your tanks, it kind of isolates the, the moisture in it. Um, so there, it's different uh, from that perspective. We test ours all the time. We start testing our customer tanks, usually about the second week of October, just to find out what the cloud points are because we do a lot of critical infrastructure with uh, power gens, things like that. So we have to know exactly where those cloud points are. So we know how to treat that as uh, an Arctic front comes in to make sure that uh, that critical infrastructure doesn't go down. So we're testing all the time um, to just make sure we know exactly where our customers are so they don't have any issues when it comes up. Trucks are a little bit different because you get fuel from all over. Um, that, that makes it a little more challenging because you're gonna basically get it from all racks. And where, you know, a paraffin is really good in the wintertime because you're going to get a little more efficiency out of the fuel. And you know what happens in the wintertime. You do get that like you had that picture of. So that's that's what we see in the marketplace. Excellent. Thank you, Keith. All right. I do not see any other questions. So I would just like to say in closing, thank you to Nick. Thank you to Leroy. We're very Fortunate to have you both and a whole maintenance team working around the clock to keep our trucks and our customers' trucks up and running seamlessly and safely during the winter months. If you have any questions about a maintenance program at AIM or any kind of extra maintenance work that you might need done, please reach out to me following this session. Um, if you have any questions about anything we reviewed today, I'll include Leroy and Nick's contact information in the email I send out tomorrow morning with the resources from today's webinar. Please reach out to us. We're really happy to help. And we thank you so much for your time this afternoon and hope you have a great rest of your Tuesday. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Leroy. Thanks, Nick. Thank you.